Our world has seen its fair share of extraordinary people. They might not have been superhumans, they still managed to change the world in one way or the other. We're talking warlords who conquered vast regions, scientists who gave us technological breakthroughs, philosophers who changed how we see the world, you name it. Most of the time, these transformative people have seemed like they could never place a foot wrong. Whether through carefully crafted public personas or just sheer hard work, these people seem like perfect beings. But, as we all know, no one's perfect. And if you peek into the private lives of many of these people, you're sure to find something not so squeaky clean. In this video, we'll take a quick dive into the personal lives of 10 historical figures to reveal some of their dirtiest secrets. Will your favorite historical figure be covered? Let's find out. Number 10. Genghis Khan We begin our video with one of the most legendary warlords to ever walk the face of the earth. Genghis Khan was a massively powerful warrior who lived between 1162 and 1227. Although he was born in an impoverished and obscure Mongolia, Genghis rose to prominence early and eventually consolidated different standalone Mongolian tribes into one empire and began a massive crusade of conquests. At its height, the Mongolian Empire under Genghis Khan extended from the country all across Asia and even to the Adriatic Sea in Europe. To date, the Mongol Empire remains the largest land empire the world has ever seen. Yeah. This guy was not one to mess around. But we're not here to talk about Genghis the warlord. We're here to talk about Genghis the lover. And boy, what a lover he was. You see, when Genghis wasn't busy putting down rebellions and subjugating nations to his will across Asia, he spent his time with the ladies. Genghis reportedly had about six official wives and 500 concubines. Yes, you heard that right. 500 concubines. This man was so legendary that he could literally spend a night with each of his women and he'd still have some change after a full calendar year. Now, you'd think that having such a massive rove of concubines would slow down a man like Genghis. Well, you'd be wrong. Our guy was such a freak that as of 2020, about 16 million males, or 0.5% of the Earth's population, were genetically linked to him. For Genghis, a brutal ruler with unchallenged power and godlike status, Getting women was as easy as it could get. The Mongol warlord particularly liked sleeping with the wives and daughters of his enemies, but that alone didn't satiate him. Genghis reportedly had a specific liking for women with small noses, round hips, long hair, and beautiful voices. Talk about a man with taste. Genghis' soldiers believed he had extraordinary sexual prowess. Interestingly, he seemed to pass this down as well. His descendants ruled across Asia and the Middle East after his death, and they went on spreading their seed heavily. For instance, Genghis's son Toshi had 40 sons on his own. Genghis's grandson, Kublai Khan, reportedly had 22 legitimate sons and added 30 virgins to his concubine club every year. This was a family of relentless horn dogs. Number 9. Pablo Picasso Away from the battlefield, let's take a look at one of the most revolutionary artists ever. Born in Spain in 1881, Pablo Ruiz Picasso was a trend-setting, all-rounder artist. He was a painter, sculptor, ceramicist, theater designer, you name it. If you're an artist today, the odds are that you count this genius as one of your biggest creative influences. As every artist knows, it's important to have a muse while working, and for Picasso, his muses typically used to be women. Picasso was a famously polyamorous man who fell in and out of love at will. Throughout his life, Picasso was married twice, however, not even marriage could stop him from engaging in different relationships. He'd often get romantically involved with multiple women and sometimes date several ladies at the same time. According to records, Picasso struck up relationships with no less than 20 women, and those are the relationships we know about. Considering that he was a popular artist who lived in the public sphere and worked with a lot of models, dancers, and actresses, Picasso was pretty much surrounded by pretty women throughout his professional life, and once he felt the sparks for a lady, he was relentless in his pursuit of her. It's easy to see how sexuality fueled Picasso's art and creativity. After all, what's more beautiful than a woman? The problem, however, was that Picasso was also kind of a jerk. He'd often mistreat his women, and most of his relationships ended pretty badly. In 1904, Picasso met Fernande Olivier, a French model and artist. The pair struck a relationship, and Olivier even inspired some of Picasso's earliest cubist paintings and sculptures. 
However, their relationship was also reportedly tempestuous, and it ended after seven years. Twenty years later, Olivier wrote several memoirs about her relationship with Picasso. However, he got wind of this and paid her not to publish them all until they both died. Dora Maar, a French photographer, was another woman to suffer from Picasso's cruelty. The pair met in 1935 and had a seven-year relationship, and Maher was also one of Picasso's muses. However, he was abusive to her, often pitting her against other women in a contest for his love and attention. Picasso even did a painting called Weeping Woman that depicted Maher crying. She eventually ended the affair in 1943, suffered a nervous breakdown, and became a recluse for most of her life. Whoa, never meet your heroes, am I right? Number 8. Adolf Hitler I don't think there's anything I could say about Adolf Hitler that hasn't been said already. The German military general began a brutal campaign of expansion in 1939 that led to the Second World War. The global conflict only ended when Hitler himself died in 1945, essentially making him one of the most consequential people in the modern era, albeit for all of the wrong reasons. Regardless of what you might think about Hitler, there's no question that he was adored by millions around the world and, in a way, still is. Hitler inspired the devotion of millions of girls and ladies, and he was loved by them. Interestingly, though, he did his best to portray himself as a man who had no time for such things, an ineligible bachelor who was only focused on his country. But, like many other things, this image was a misleading one. Hitler had private relationships, and each one was pretty much more problematic than the last. Hitler's first real relationship was with his niece, of all people. Her name was Gilai Raubel and she was the daughter of Hitler's half-sister. Robel had been staying at Hitler's apartment while she completed her studies, and the Führer eventually took a liking to her. His niece? Sheesh. It's unclear whether Hitler and Robel actually had intercourse, but their relationship was definitely not platonic. Soon enough, the dictator began to be incredibly possessive of Robel, even reaching the point where he forbade her from socializing or wearing certain types of clothes. A biographer explained that Robal had initially found Hitler's devotion quite charming, but she soon grew to loathe it. When Hitler stopped Robal from marrying a man who her parents had already approved of, she snapped. One morning, as Hitler left for a rally, Robal took one of his guns and shot herself with it. When Hitler eventually became Chancellor of Germany, he soon befriended Unity Mitford, a British socialite and a relative to one of Britain's foremost fascist politicians. Mitford was immediately smitten with Hitler, and she even moved to Germany just to be with him. The two immediately hit it off, with Mitford accompanying Hitler to several notable events. Like Hitler, Mitford had a hatred for Jews. Well, at least they had that in common. I wonder what their first date must have been like. The relationship eventually came to an end when World War II began. Mitford begged Hitler not to go to war with her country, but when he refused, she also took one of his guns and turned it on herself. Anyone else noticing a pattern here? Unlike Robal, Mitford actually survived her suicide attempt, albeit with permanent brain damage as a result. She was eventually taken back to England, where she spent the rest of her days with her estranged family. Hitler eventually got back on the horse, though. He met his eventual wife, Eva Braun, while he was still with Robal. She was 17 at the time, but they both kept close contact and eventually struck a relationship. Unlike Hitler's other partners, Braun was pretty much disinterested in politics. In fact, she spent most of her time away from him in the madness of the Nazi party. Nevertheless, their relationship was also quite rocky. Braun hated the negative press that Hitler had around the world, and the fact that he was fighting a war meant that they barely had time for each other. Through it all, Hitler and Braun got married in a Berlin bunker in 1945 as Russian soldiers approached the city. A few moments after saying their vows, husband and wife ended their lives. According to reports, Braun could actually have survived the fall of Berlin, but like millions of girls around the country, she had become devoted to her Führer and couldn't imagine living in a world without him. Number 7. Sigmund Freud Sigmund Freud is arguably the most impactful psychologist ever. Born in 1856, this Austrian neurologist is credited as being the father of modern psychoanalysis, a method of psychology that involves open dialogue with a person feeling mental distress and helping them to overcome their issues. When you think of therapists today, you think of couch time, you and the therapist in a room talking about what's going on in your noggin. Well, Sigmund pretty much came up with that. Throughout his career, Sigmund devoted himself to understanding human feelings, thought, expression, and most importantly, sexuality. 
It's pretty fitting because this man had a huge skeleton in his closet. According to sources, Sigmund apparently had a special relationship with his mother. He discovered that as a young boy, he actually wanted to marry her, and he even viewed his father as a rival for his mother's love. Psychologists have a name for this now, the Oedipus Complex. Freud's feelings apparently stemmed from the fact that his mother was especially doting on him. Looks like he took her motherly love for something else. Nevertheless, he eventually married Martha Bernays and had six kids with her. I wonder how she must have felt, knowing that she was married to someone who once wanted to sleep with his own mother. Number 6. Mahatma Gandhi Mahatma Gandhi was an Indian philosopher and activist who rose to prominence in the country's pre-independence era. While other revolutionaries and activists freely and willingly chose the violent route to protest, Gandhi was known for his peaceful approach. Gandhi's nonviolent approach to revolution helped end the British rule of India in the mid-20th century, and to date, it remains a foundation for civil disobedience movements around the world. Away from the political and revolutionary front, however, Gandhi had a pretty interesting sex life. Gandhi was pretty much a monk, and he taught his devoted followers to abstain from sexual activity and pleasure, even if they were married. Gandhi's view on sex was shaped by an interesting occurrence. Born in Gujarat, India, he was married at just 13. He and his wife, the 14-year-old Kasturba, shared a room in his family home. Two years later, while Gandhi's father was on his deathbed, he decided to excuse himself to have sex with his wife. By the time he came back, his father had died. The grief-stricken Gandhi immediately related his desire for lustful love as a reason for his father's passing. As Gandhi grew older, his seeming aversion to sex continued to grow, and after taking the vow of Brahmacharya, he began teaching against engaging in sex. Even if his followers were married, Gandhi's teachings were pretty hardcore. He used to organize experiments where boys and girls would be made to bathe and sleep naked together, although they'd be punished for any sexual talk or activity. He also advised men to never be alone with their wives. Instead, they could take cold showers when they felt any lustful desire. Yikes. Take it easy, bro. Interestingly, Gandhi's rules didn't seem to apply to him. He had a personal carer who would bathe and sleep with him in the same bed, but whenever he was challenged, Gandhi would claim that he never did anything with her. As he grew older, Gandhi had even more women around him. He'd oblige them to sleep with him and engage in his experiments, even though several of them were married and were forbidden from even being in the same room with their husbands. I personally find it hard to believe that Gandhi never had any intercourse with all of the naked women sleeping and bathing with him, but hey, maybe it's just me. Number 5. Marilyn Monroe Marilyn Monroe is the ultimate and original city girl. This blonde bombshell was the archetype of the modern-day celebrity lifestyle. She was the ultimate hottie, and she pretty much had to live her entire life in the public eye. Think of the Kardashians, only that she was pretty much the only one getting all the attention in her day. Being the most popular celebrity of her era, it's easy to see why Marilyn was the toast of pretty much every man. And as you'd expect from a young, hot sex symbol, she had her fair share of lovers in weird relationships. Marilyn's first marriage came when she was just 16 and she married 21-year-old James Doherty, her next-door neighbor and a police officer. However, the marriage ended four years after as Doherty joined the Merchant Marines and Marilyn began modeling. In 1954, after Marilyn had already transitioned to acting, she married former baseball star Joe DiMaggio. Despite the 12-year age gap, both were smitten with each other and got married in San Francisco. However, the marriage only lasted nine months. The usually reserved DiMaggio reportedly got uncomfortable with some of Marilyn's professional choices and obligations, and the pair eventually got divorced. Still not giving up on love, Marilyn married playwright Arthur Miller in 1956. The pair had worked together, and Marilyn was reportedly drawn to him due to his respectful treatment of her and his reputation in the industry. The marriage to Miller was more stable, but it also had its rocky times. Marilyn reportedly got pregnant three times in this marriage, but she miscarried each time. Also, Marilyn reportedly found some notes where Miller expressed embarrassment and disappointment in her. Heartbroken, she filed for divorce from him. Now that we're done with the marriages, let's go to the flings. Because friends, there were a lot. Throughout her career, Marilyn was constantly linked to different men, including Frank Sinatra, Charlie Chaplin Jr., Milton Berle, and Marlon Brando. There are even rumors that she had a fling with President John F. Kennedy and his brother Robert. Many of these are just rumors, but hey, with her looks, I'm pretty sure Marilyn could bag any man, even the commander-in-chief. Number 4. Wilt Chamberlain 
If you're a basketball fan, then you definitely know Wilt Chamberlain. He played in the NBA for 14 seasons, becoming one of the most dominant men to ever step foot on a basketball court. At 7 feet 1 inch tall, Wilt was a freak of nature, and in basketball's earliest days, he dominated easily on the court. He holds several records that still haven't been broken to this day, including being the only player to score 100 points or more in a game. He was also the first player to rack up 30,000 career points, a feat that only six other players in the history of the sport have achieved to this day. I mean, for a guy to be nicknamed Goliath, you kind of get the idea. Wilt's dominance wasn't just on the court, though. Apparently, he was also quite a freak in the bedroom. In his 1990 book, A View From Above, the Big Dipper claimed to have slept with 20,000 women in his lifetime. Even though he got a lot of criticism, Wilt stayed true to his claim. Close friends claimed that Wilt especially loved threesomes and could go multiple rounds with multiple women within a day. And according to legend, he had been intimate with about 23 women on a 10-day road trip. Wilt was also an insomniac who could go days without sleeping. So, while we mortal men slept, Goliath was probably out on a rampage. Look, I'm not even going to do the math on this one. Let's just take Mr. Chamberlain's word for it. Number 3. King Henry VIII King Henry VIII was one of the most consequential monarchs in British history. Not necessarily for the things he did, but for who he was. Henry ruled England from 1509 to his death in 1547, presiding over the English Renaissance and the Protestant Reformation. He was a famously ravenous man who loved to eat and didn't have much of an interest in ruling. But he was king anyways, so he just had to. Throughout his reign, Henry was on a never-ending quest for a male heir. Due to this, he ended up marrying six wives and kept several mistresses. When it comes to partners, Henry's rap sheet was quite extensive. Honestly, talking about him alone could take the entire video, but let's look at the record. Henry's first wife, Catherine of Aragorn, was said to be the only woman he ever loved. The problem, though, was that she never had a son. So, while he kept her, she was pretty much demoted. He eventually divorced her when his eyes caught another lady. Catherine had it nice, though. The lady he replaced her with, Anne Boiselin, had a daughter and a bunch of stillborn sons. Frustrated with her, Henry eventually accused Anne of adultery and had her beheaded in 1536. Next, Henry married Jane Seymour, Anne's lady-in-waiting. Jane did give birth to a male heir, but she died from complications due to childbirth. Well, at least Henry got his coveted heir. The king eventually went on a marriage break for two years, after which he married Anne of Cleves as part of a strategic agreement with Germany. But when Anne arrived at the palace, Henry found that she looked nothing like her paintings. This was pretty much the first recorded case of catfishing. Henry tried to halt the wedding, but he couldn't. Anne, the so-called ugly wife, eventually accepted a divorce and settlement six months later and lived in peace as the king's sister. Henry then married Catherine Howard, the lady-in-waiting, to his previous wife. He fancied Catherine, but he couldn't do much with her since he was already fat and could barely walk. Despite the gifts he showered her with, however, rumors of Catherine's infidelity got to Henry less than a year into their wedding. Enraged, Henry ordered Catherine's beheading. In 1543, the old Henry eventually married Catherine Parr. He had her arrested when she showed interest in Protestantism, but she was eventually released and became his partner. Ultimately, they had a pretty decent marriage, and Catherine eventually died in 1548, a year after King Henry. Number 2. Prince Prince was one of the greatest musicians of his generation. In the pantheon of musical acts that graced the 20th century, he stacks up there with the best of them. I'm talking the Beatles, Rolling Stones, and even Michael Jackson, who Prince had some beef with. Like many artists, Prince also had a bit of an eccentric side, and in more ways than one, his eccentricity showed when it came to his love life. Prince was a spontaneous free spirit whose heart was always open to love. Sadly though, most of his attempts at finding the right person came to nothing. Prince's first public relationship came in the 80s when he and singer Denise Matthews started dating. Denise was part of Prince's band at the time, and they struck a relationship eventually. They eventually broke up, with Prince moving on to date British singer and model Anna Fantastic in the early 90s. Anna was just 16 when they got together, but they had a relationship that lasted several years, with Anna also serving as a major muse and source of creative inspiration for the hitmaker. After breaking up with Anna, Prince started dating Mady Garcia, another dancer. Looks like this guy had a thing for women who could bust a move. Prince and Garcia got married on Valentine's Day in 1996, but their four-year marriage eventually broke down 
After they lost two of their children, the grieving partners drifted apart and eventually went their separate ways. After a brief relationship hiatus, Prince once again got back on the horse. He started dating interior designer Charlene Friend in the early 2000s, but things got messy after she sued him in 2003. Friend claimed that Prince had been excessively controlling, even going as far as choosing her clothes and preventing her from socializing with people. The singer's second and final marriage was to Manuela Testolini. She had been working at a non-profit when they got married, and she seemed to be the only partner of his that wasn't in the entertainment scene. Their marriage lasted five years, eventually ending amicably in 2006. All his life, Prince was never shy about finding love. Too bad none of his relationships had a happy ending. Number 1. Cleopatra Cleopatra was one of the most consequential Egyptian monarchs to ever live. Known for her immense beauty and military prowess, she remains one of the most renowned female rulers in the history of man, and if the reports are to be believed, she was also quite a handful in the sack. To be fair, Cleopatra didn't necessarily have many male lovers. I mean, how many men around the world were impressive enough to bag the Queen of Egypt? Nevertheless, she had two high-profile relationships with two Roman generals. Cleopatra was born in 69 BC in Alexandria. Her father, Ptolemy XII, eventually died a few years later, with the Egyptian throne now falling to her and her brother, Ptolemy XIII. While the sibling spouses initially ruled together, Ptolemy XIII and some of his friends eventually ran Cleopatra out of Egypt. Desperate to take the throne back, she teamed up with none other than Julius Caesar. But the alliance wasn't just a strategic one. Cleopatra and Caesar fell in love, and they even had a son, Caesarion. Sadly, Caesar was murdered in 44 BC, and immediately, two men jostled for the Roman leadership, Octavian and Mark Antony. The two men eventually formed a triumvirate with Marcus Aemilius Lepidus, leaving Mark Antony in charge of the Roman Empire's eastern territories. Mark Antony eventually met Cleopatra in 41 BC. The two immediately hit it off, and Antony even followed her back to Egypt. There, they formed a drinking club known as the Society of Inimitable Lovers, had playful pranks on the city's residents, and pretty much lived a fairy tale love life. They also had three children together. However, Antony's political life appeared to get the better of him. He provoked Octavian after distributing land to his and Cleopatra's children, and Octavian in turn disbanded the triumvirate and declared war on the couple. Eventually, Cleopatra and Antony died as a result of the war. Antony stabbed himself when he got false word that Cleopatra had died, and while she had tried to keep up the fight, Cleopatra eventually saw that the war couldn't be won and ingested poison. It was an ending so dramatic that even Shakespeare couldn't craft it better. Indeed, uncovering the true essence of a person requires more than just observing their public image. It takes a personal encounter to truly know them, and for most of the people on our list, it appears that love just wasn't as clear-cut as it is for the rest of us. What do you think? Was Ava Braun wrong to want to die with Adolf Hitler? Did Will Chamberlain really sleep with 20,000 women? Let us know in the comments. Let us know in the comments.